What is Windows 10X and why is it important? Let's talk about it. What's up everybody, Brad here. And at the Microsoft hardware event, they announced something that I think is getting overlooked because it was attached to hardware, but I think it's a really big deal. So Microsoft announced Windows 10X and it sounds like, hey, this is just another iteration of Windows because we already have Windows 10 and now we have Windows 10X. And the naming is a bit confusing because Microsoft also announced the Surface Pro X, but the Surface Pro X does not run Windows 10X if that makes sense. It doesn't make sense, but at, that's why we're here. We're gonna talk about it because Windows 10X is actually showing the future of Windows. It really, really is. And while the UI and other things might change, the underpinnings of Windows 10X are a really big deal. And that's why I'm surprising that Microsoft went with that quasi confusing Windows 10X name when it is such a big change. Now, I wanna jump in the time machine a little bit because I've been talking about Windows Lite and then we've also had Santorini all the way back to February. And I've I actually created a mock-up, which is how we're gonna start this conversation, because this is what I saw earlier this year. And this is the, the thing that really started driving this conversation at a larger scale. But as we dive through the imagery that Microsoft has shown and we talk about some of the features and aspects that's going on, just keep in mind that I've been working on this for a while. And so while we don't know everything yet, we there's a lot more to know than Microsoft has officially talked about. So let's get it. Focus there. All right, so the first thing they showed off on the Neo device is that it supports Windows Hello. That is absolutely not surprising. It's actually slightly more minimal um, than we see on some of the other devices, but that's not where the fun starts. The fun starts here, and you can see how on the screen on the left of this Neo device, that is what Microsoft calls this Surface hardware, you can see how my mock-up that I created based off of things that I had seen came to life. And it is very much a different UI. Now, Microsoft is telling us that, hey, these UI and feature elements are not coming to Windows 10. The reason why they say that is that Windows 10 already has a really good UI. People like it. It's got high user feedback scores and blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I, while Microsoft is officially saying that, it would not surprise me to see some of these elements make their way over, especially because this is a very touch-first friendly environment. And Windows 10 has really scaled back Windows 10 or Windows 10 traditional, I should say, has really scaled back the touch friendliness. Remember on Windows 8, it was this really hybrid mix of touch and mouse and keyboard, and it didn't work out so well, but they kind of overcorrected, in my opinion, with Windows 10. And so now we have Windows 10 X, and you can see down there at the bottom, on the bottom left, I should say, there's a start button. Now, that button, based on the, the video that Microsoft showed, what it does is you swipe up from the bottom and then you can get access to that, which brings up all your apps, which is in a familiar kind of almost Android-esque, but not quite uh, UI. And then you can get access to your apps. You can see the show all button. And it, it really is just a, a subtle, it's not a subtle, but it's a, a dramatic change, but yet it feels familiar in the Microsoft world, mostly because they're still pivoting around that start button. And then of course, on the right side, you can have a different app. Uh, in this case, they have the Edge browser. Now, here's where things sort of start to get interesting because you have an application that is clearly utilizing Windows Snap. Now, if you're not familiar with Snap, you take an app, an app or a window or whatever and drag it to the side and then it will kind of opaque and show you where you can drop it. And clearly you can see here, the app can move from window to window and all that good stuff. Now, one of the big differences with Windows 10 X is it's a much better iteration of what is going on in the Windows world because like the Surface Pro X, uh, what we're understanding about the Windows 10X is that it features virtualization technology to allow you to run any Win32 application in a container and all that good stuff. It is not just strictly limited to the store or progressive web apps. And that's similar to the Surface Pro X where you can run um, just about any app as long as it's not 64-bit. But this is Microsoft really pushing that edge. And the reason why that is so key is that when you can successfully sandbox a Win32 application, you can protect it, one, from the OS itself. It is much more secure. You can make it so that that application cannot harm the OS. Two, you can also make it so that application does not degrade the performance of the OS. Three, because it's virtualized and all that, it makes it much easier to just shut the machine down and start it back 
back up because they're own their each little instances. It's not interwoven across the UI or the UI, the underlying infrastructure that slows down an OS. Now, Microsoft has done a very good job over the years of making sure that Windows 10 doesn't degrade in performance over time, but it's still not perfect because of that legacy code. And by sandboxing, containerizing, virtualizing, use the terminology that you're most familiar with. And I know there's going to be people pointing out there are differences to some of that. But the idea here is that the 32 Win32 app is segmented from the rest of the OS. And Microsoft has been working towards this for a very long time, and it's just now starting to come out. And so here you can see the same mail application, but it's spread across two different screens, a productivity scenario. That's where Microsoft is making their money. That's what they want to show off. That is their differentiator. I don't blame them for doing that. Here again, once again, showing off two different apps side by side, showing how a split screen foldable device makes sense in the Microsoft world. And again, here you have OneNote and then Outlook or Mail. But the more important thing is if you look on that left side, you start to see a little bit of a start or a task bar down there, right? You have the start button and then you have the different apps to jump between things. And again, I believe you're gonna swipe up from the bottom to reveal that as a gesture to be able to move between applications. It's different than traditional Windows, but yet it's familiar at the same time. Microsoft is gonna move carefully forward with gestures on Windows 10X, but it's an interesting look at how they are thinking about UI on a touch-only device. Now, the applications can also span multiple screens and rotation too, because look, you can see that the screen has been, or the device has been rotated. And again, look at the bottom there about how the taskbar is filled with the apps and it's just one giant screen experience minus that huge bezel or hinge in the middle. And also the bezels on the devices aren't screaming modern, but hey, this is a first generation device, so we will go with that. And then here is a more traditional layout with Spotify and PowerPoint, um, and then a keyboard, which starts to show that, hey, this thing can and will function like a laptop. Microsoft is not holding back, that which means that also Windows 10X is under is supporting Bluetooth because that is how this keyboard is connected to the device. It's just showing off a different way about how Windows 10X can adapt and be used in multiple different versions. And this is potentially one of the most interesting ones minus the image that is next. You can see here that they're talking about putting screens or keyboards on the screens and how the screen can react to that type of information and then adjust the layout. Much much like this one where you have a very traditional laptop layout with a trackpad down below, the keys up top, and hey, it's a it looks like a laptop. And so there's a better look at it. Now, why is this so important? Why is this matter? Why do we need to understand what Windows 10X is? Brad, it's just a tether UI. But guys, there's so much more going on under that hood. I can't stress enough that the security implementations or implications of the ability to con containerize an application is huge. This is also based off the core Windows core OS, I believe, or where what we heard about that. There's been a lot of names floating around because I think a lot of different groups have been involved with this. But guys, this is showing off the direction that Microsoft thinks Windows should be headed. For a while now, Windows has sort of been a directionless, directionless platform. We get new updates, but we don't know what the end goal is. These products are not designed to come out for an, at, a year, I was about to say at least a year, but it should be sometime around now in about a year, we should be seeing Neo and then Duo, which is Duo looks like Neo, but it's smaller and it runs Android, but that's a totally different conversation for another time. But why is this so important? Guys, this is the future of Windows. This is where Microsoft is putting their best engineers. This is where they're doing their best work right now is on the Neo because they know that this is another risk for the company. Do I think the Neo is gonna sell in high volume? No. Um, but do I think it's going to be a hero type device? I absolutely do. And the, the thing that Microsoft keeps hitting on is like this stuff is not, the UI elements are not coming to Windows 10. Let's just say that is absolutely true, even though I don't think it is true. What it will do is it will absolutely drive the UI language for Windows 10. What I mean, remember Fluent that kind of sort of got implemented but didn't get implemented and all that stuff? Neo is going to be the new driver of the UI elements because Microsoft is going to want to make it feel familiar like a Windows 10 machine, but at the same time, it's gonna offer new functionality. And also, also one of the key things here with Windows 10X is because the hardware is so locked and limited, that means there's minimal permutations of the OS out there or hardware running the OS, which means it's easier for Microsoft to, to rapidly implement new features, 
change things and do all that because it's not like they have to make a change and then test it on a Radeon chip and then test it on an NVIDIA chip and then test it on an ARM chip and then test it on Intel. Right For right now, Windows 10X will only run on uh, Intel. Now, they did say that they it will go to ARM, but it's not ready at this time. And there was actually some information uh, popping up across the web that, hey, the ARM version was trailing behind and because Intel's version was ready first, that is what they are running with. But you can absolutely see how an ARM-style device like that makes a lot of sense. And so Windows 10X to me is the most interesting thing Microsoft has done. Yes, the Surface Pro X is probably the most interesting hardware that you can buy because again, remember this stuff doesn't come out. But from a software side, Windows 10X is the future of the platform that right now is running somewhere on 900 million plus devices. Based on the trajectory of Windows 10, it will cross that billion user threshold uh, sometime probably in the first half of 2020, especially as Windows 7 comes to an end. So the thing that is driving the UI and some of the features is a device that is going to sell in minimum volume, but that is going to have a major impact on the billion people who are using Windows 10. And so if you want to look about the future of Windows 10, look no further than Windows 10X.